Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Making Time with me, Candy Meredith. First episode. Super, super, super excited. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do something that I am very, very good at. And that is baking. I'm an excellent cake baker, if I can toot my own horn. And so I'm here to teach you how to make one of Louisiana's sweetest, most loved and tasty confections. Not the praline, not the beignet, but let me just tell you, we down here are obsessed with the ooey gooey cake, or as some people call it in other parts of the country, chest cake. We like ooey gooey down here. Sounds very, very yummy, yummy. So let's get started. First, I'm gonna go over everything that you need to make the best cake ever. Okay, <laughs> and by the way, I say okay a lot. Um, so, okay, back to it. What I like to do is I like to have all of my ingredients on the table, separated, laid out. I'm a very organized cook. I don't like to have to look for anything. I don't like to have to go to the store for anything. Once I start baking, I need everything right there for me to just get into it and get it done. So what you're gonna need first is you're gonna need one box of butter yellow cake. The most delicious cake ever. And let me tell you, I never heard of this cake, butter yellow, until about a year ago when my mom kept talking about this ooey gooey cake, this ooey gooey cake, this ooey gooey cake, and it's made with butter yellow cake. And I'm like, what is butter yellow cake? Well, this is butter yellow cake. It's just a regular um, cake mix that actually has a lot of butter already made into the fill. That noise you just heard was my oven. I make sure, once again, that everything is done way ahead of time. So I was just preheating my oven to 350 degrees and that little buzz which happened at the most perfect time in our recording was just my little reminder that the oven is now at 350 and ready to go. So we have our butter yellow cake. I've already put inside the cake mix one egg. As you can see it's right here. We need one egg in there. Okay. I also have, normally you would put one cup of whatever you're going to use in your filling. I'm making a pecan ooey gooey right now. So I have one cup of um, pecans, my idea of one cup of pecans, which is really two cups of pecans because we love pecans in our food. So <laughs> whenever there's something being baked, whether it's bread pudding or you know a pie or whatever we like pecans so i decided to just treat my family to something a little extra and i put two cups of pecans in here instead of one but the recipe calls for one cup of whatever you're going to do if you're going to make it with coconut one cup of coconut chocolate chips one cup of chocolate chips if you're making it with pecans one cup of pecans but like i said you can put these in to taste for us, the taste is two cups. So I have my two cups of pecans ready to go. I have my one melted butter all ready to go. This is all I'm going to need for the actual cake filling. Now, when it comes to the cake frosting, which is a little bit uh, sweet, if you will. I like sweet. Again, my name is Candy, so I like sweet. Um, what you want to do is you want to get yourself one box or if you buy it in the bag it comes usually in a two pound bag of confection sugar and that's just white powdered sugar we call it confection sugar but you're gonna need one box of this or one pound of this you're also going to need another um, stick of melted butter this is one already melted I like to have everything softened and ready to go. Pack of cream cheese. So it's just one package of cream cheese, which you can get at any store. And also to go inside of my frosting, I put two eggs. And so we'll do the frosting a little bit later in this extra bowl that I have here. But first, we're going to get started on making our cake. And there's one thing on this table that I haven't mentioned just yet. And that is a little extract. Now, I'm not going to tell you which kind of extract it is, but I think if you're looking at it, you probably got an idea. I like to put inside my cake 
about a teaspoon or teaspoon and a half <laughs> of extract. Once I put that extract in, I go ahead and put all the other ingredients in here. So here goes my butter. I'm just going to put that in there for you so you can get an idea of how that works. And then I have my pecans. I'm going to put all of those in there. Put that to the side because that's done. If anything's done when I'm cooking, I put it to the side. I don't want it in my way. And then all you have to do here is just mix everything up. Some people like to use their hands. I don't like to use my hands. I mean, you know, it's okay. I just would prefer not to. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and mix everything up. And as you can see, it's starting to get the kind of consistency that would happen if you were making a bowl of dough. Because we don't have any milk in here or anything like that. It's just the cake mix and whatever you want to put in here. In our case, it's pecans. It's just the cake mix, the pecans, the butter, which is what's actually holding it all together. And it's the um, extract that I've put in here. And you can put whatever kind of extract you want in here. If you're making a coconut one, you want to put some coconut extract in here. Put a little coconut extract in here. It couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt to have a good time. So, once this is all done, I'm going to have to shake it out. I'm going to have to shake that out like that. I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff way to the side because I don't want it in my way. I then take my spatula and I start to really mix it up, start to scoop it up. And every now and again, it doesn't work exactly how I want it to work, so I'll have to use my hands, which, by the way, are clean because I washed them right prior to recording. <laughs> so, once I have this going on, and this is nice and good, and I have a good mix here. This is the only problem with using two cups of pecans um, versus one cup of pecans. When you use two cups, it's a little bit harder for it to get to that doughy consistency really fast. So you just sort of have to work it just a little bit more to get it to where you want it to be. But isn't that like life? Life's like that. You kind of have to work it a little bit harder sometimes to get where you want to be, right? So that's how we make this ooey gooey cake here. This is the fill part. So we're just going to make this just like this. I'm a girl who doesn't use a lot of mixers and things like that. I really like doing a hand whip. So what I do is I get this part all done. Once this part is all done, I take out my, this people is a 9 by 13 by 2. This one is about 2 and a half inch deep pan it's rectangular and all you have to do is you take your cake once it looks like this if you can see that once your cake looks like this right here it's all mixed up all nice you take it you're going to just pour it right in here you're going to pour it right in there you're not going to grease the bottom of the pan or anything like that i'm going to take this I'm going to put it here to the side because I have to finish that in just a minute. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, see how quick it is to make this cake? The next thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and put together the frosting. Now, for the frosting, I have my confection sugar. Again, that's one box or one pound. Somebody's horn blowing in the middle of me recording. Ah, the nerve. But that's what happens when you're on location. We're in my kitchen. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put my one stick of melted butter right in there. I like butter. I once heard Paula Dean say, everything's better with butter. And I said, you know what, Paula Dean? You may be right about that. This is my one package of softened. Oops. <laughs> I got that everywhere. <laughs> That's the confection sugar went flying. That is as I put in 
my one package of cream cheese already softened and here are my two eggs I'm just gonna go ahead and drop those right in there gonna put all of this stuff to the side now I'm a little bit of a cheat I also like to put a little extract just a little bit take teaspoon teeny tiniest of teaspoons in my frosting just a little you know something that I like I go ahead and I do a pre-mix, the really soft mix, to try and get the ingredients to blend in advance. Because when you start using the whipper, if you use a whip, even if you're using the whip that's on your mixer, what's going to happen is without some type of guard on the side of your mixing bowl, sugar is going to fly everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. So, I do pre-mix. I mix everything together just like so just like so once I see that most of it is already mixed I'll go ahead and take my whip out which and my other whip here backup whip I'll go ahead and take that out I don't like to leave any ingredients behind when I say I don't like to leave any ingredients behind I mean any ingredients I don't like to leave anything behind so I will go ahead and close clean that off there and I'm just going to bring you in a little bit closer oh you like that don't you <laughs> so that you can actually see what's happening here as I'm whipping so I'm going to stand up you're probably going to miss my head here but I want you to really get a good look of me whipping this here so as you can see I'm whipping everything together and then once everything is mixed together I'm going to show you the process okay of putting it all putting the topping on top of the fill so we are back and as you can see I have hand whipped this frosting into shape it is nice and smooth in this bowl and this is really what your frosting should look like. It should have a nice, smooth consistency about it. I don't suggest that everyone goes around trying to use a hand whipper. It's not for everyone. Some people are going to just be more comfortable using the whippers that attach to your mixer, which is perfectly fine. And it'll give you a really smooth, really um, even blend, and it'll be fast. For me personally, I like to do everything kind of by hand. So that's what this looks like that's your frosting now the most important part of making this cake and making it beautiful is and very tasty is getting the filling right in the pan and the way you do that is and pardon all my jewelry I like jewelry so <laughs> I wear jewelry for everything and so part of how you do that is you need to make sure that you a don't have your pan greased in the bottom and B that once your cake is really in a good dough ball you put it in here immediately and then C you need to press it out so that it's evenly distributed across the bottom of the pan and into the corners and at your corners you just want to put a little dip in there so I'm going to show you how to do that so that any frosting that runs can run right into that little nook right there that you've created so let's go ahead and press out our cake again I have two cups of pecans in here so this one is not as tight as it normally is when you're putting it in the pan but I guarantee you when we start eating it and every bite has some pecans in it everyone's gonna go oh it is so worth it it's so so worth it so let's get to it so we're just gonna go ahead and evenly distribute evenly distribute our filling 